What is up, nerds? It's me, your buddy pal, Hey Archer. Welcome back to Hey Archer, episode 145. Had to bring in the whole squad, whole team. Um, the Book of Boba Fett has ended. So if for some reason you don't want spoilers to the last episode, pause, come back after you've watched it. By the time this comes out, I assume you've watched it. But just in case, we're primarily going to talk about the final episode. So without further ado... All right, fellas, uh, for everybody who's listening, welcome back to Hey Archer. We have Sal, we have Anthony. We're talking Book of Boba Fett, episode seven, series as a whole. Uh, how, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pose a question. <clears throat> and the only reason we're doing this as a Hey Archer is so that we can kind of limit the rambling because there's so much that we could ramble about in this episode. I think you both can agree on that. So yeah, let me pose yeah. a question. I'm going to pose the question to both of you first and, and Sal, you can kick it off. Um, is it possible to review this episode without trashing the entire season? Like, can you say anything good about this episode? I guess. You, you can't. I mean, I don't feel bad about trashing the entire season when the entire season is trash. It, it, it's there's no, Oh God, I don't even know where to start. I know you don't want to ramble, but it's like, so hard to not get that train going yeah because there's so much wrong with it yeah. um man like what the fuck <laughs> yeah <laughs> i don't well, even know how else to put well, it well and all right anthony can you is it possible for you to review this last episode without being a negative nancy uh i mean there's definitely a couple of oh this was cool things but no overall no the the last two episodes aside, because as we've said at length, those were not episodes of the book of Boba Fett. Right. Uh, it, I don't understand why, I don't understand why this season happened the way it happened. And even though they kind of gave me what I said I wanted in the finale, I wasn't satisfied by it. So right. I don't really have much good to say about it. Yeah. Uh, to reference our Hey Archer man of steel video Mm. i don't i don't know who to blame so in that video we started towards the end we started to put more of the blame on david esquire right and now the same applies here yes i was glad you took it who's to blame is it dave filoni yeah is it john favreau is it robert rodriguez because robert rodriguez did three episodes and they're probably the three worst no yes eh, yeah they're probably the three worst um, so who do we blame? Because Dave Filoni has credit on one episode. Actually, the two best episodes are the episodes without Boba Fett, both directed by Dave Filoni and Bryce Dallas. Mm-hmm. Um, do we blame Favreau? Do we blame Rodriguez? Uh, I don't think it's right to blame Morrison. Morrison is just given he's given the script and he's being told what to do. And he's probably doing a great job for what's available to him. I don't know, man. Probably, but it's it it is weird. It it, I think Favreau definitely wrote, except for the the uh, Mandalorian and Luke episodes. I think he wrote the whole series. Uh, if you can add that to your list of fact checking, Steve. Uh, but yeah, it's so it 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 gets teed up so well at the end of the Mandalorian. Like he just walks in like a badass, shoots Bib Fortuna sits in the chair and you got Fennec behind him ripping a cork out of a bottle and chugging it or whatever. And then black. And then you're like, Oh wow, this is going to be good. Mm-hmm. And so, then what did, what the hell did they do? One. Do you so, want to, do you want to, do you want to go right now? Order? Hang on. Let me just, let me just knock out that, that director question real quick. Sure. So right now I'm on IMDB and looking at what, the fans reviewed the episodes as right. So the two lowest episode one and episode three is actually the lowest 
Okay. Those are both Rodriguez. And then the fans gave episode four a 7.6. They gave episode seven a eight. Robert Rodriguez. So he has three. And episode so four was trash. It was him. And then yeah. who were the other episode two? Four's really who were the other directors aside from uh, Bologna and uh, Howard? So the lowest rated episodes, uh, Rodriguez. And then we have Kevin Tent- Tancheron. T-A-N-C-H-A-R-O-E-N. I don't even know who that is. No idea. Yeah. And then um, another director, episode two. Steven or Steph Green. That was actually a pretty strong episode. That was the episode that went yeah. more into the um, Tuscan Raider stuff. Um, I like that episode a lot. I mean, yeah. I don't consider yeah. the Mandalorian episodes in in line because it no. really. I agree with what you said last week. With um, it almost seems like they did damage control by putting those two episodes in, and they'll do reshoots for Mandalorian season three. Yeah. Um, but the strongest of the core episodes that actually have Boba Fett. I believe it's two. Yeah. Two is definitely the best one. Yeah. So, all right. I'd agree with that. So let's, all right, let's try to break it down best we can. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm like fighting the urge to just be like that angry basement dwelling. This all sucks person. I'm trying my well, best. You could be, you could be the angry basement dwelling and I will be the angry rafter dwelling. Yeah. <laughs> since I'm in the belfry in the attic. Um, all right, so let me talk about something good, right? I okay. what I thought was good. We finally got to see a rancor in action. Did yes. w- all right, uh, Anthony, go first. What were your thoughts on that whole segment? Did you see it coming? You know, I know we talked about in a side chat. They have to. There has to be a rancor somewhere here because it's they they alluded to it. So, what were your overall thoughts on it? Uh, I was actually surprised. I thought that was in. Like at, by that point in the show, it started kind of like looking for good things. So I was like, mm-hmm. "Oh, okay, this is cool." Yeah. Like doesn't, I, and I don't know why that made sense versus him getting the ship. <laughs> no, yeah. you know, it's like you're gonna jet off, and I'm like, he's like, "Oh, we need whatever he said. We need reinforcements." And I'm yeah. like, "Okay, cool. You're gonna go get the ship." I would have thought you had something by this point where you push a button and it comes to you. But okay. Mm-hmm. And then the, when the Rancor shows up, it was like, oh, wow, I didn't see them going with this. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, like, it was cool to see it in action. Uh, so that was, a, that was a good part. I'll give you that. Mm-hmm. And, but, like, again, like, I know it's Star Wars and it's, it's not very tactical on your part. Like, the, the thing still had to go, like, toe-to-toe with the droid versus your ship, which has bombs and yeah. stronger blasters and stuff like that. Yeah. So, uh but yeah, no, it was cool to see that thing like coming up over the buildings and whatnot. Got very got a got a King Kong vibes, Godzilla vibes. Yeah, for sure. So, uh, Sal, I guess riding on that. Do you think? Do you think? Do you think it helps that they keep paying homage to things by like, you know, the Godzilla or sorry, the King Kong thing, him climbing the building. Uh, the the robots being as Anthony pointed out straight out of RoboCop. Like, d- do you think is it fun having all of this? Like, oh, this is a callback to this, is that, or is it kind of like played out at this point? In this episode, I didn't mind so much. Um, the the Mandalorian episode, the first one, mm-hmm. uh, episode five, when they show the uh, no, was it uh, yeah? Well, they show the the N one Naboo starfighter. Yeah. At first, I was excited, and then I was like, "Man, they shouldn't have done that." I feel like they're tucking at my nostalgia strings. Mm-hmm. Then, to go back to this episode, I thought that was fine. I mean, I thought it was done tastefully, and it's subtle. It's a lot. It's a lot more subtle than the N one Starfighter, mm-hmm. or some of the other things they've done in the series, yeah. where it's like a direct callback, and it's like, "Man, just stop recutting stuff." Yeah, uh, an homage is an homage is one thing, and a nostalgia, like a nostalgia trip, is different. Yeah. So even Anthony, you were talking to Josh about that, like nostalgia fatigue. You know, it are are you are you feeling that at this point where it's like, all right, I'm done with the nostalgia, let's get something new, or are you like still like 
kind of okay with it if it if it makes sense. I'm. I mean, I was done with it in this episode. Uh, that the moment of like, like I say, the moment of seeing, oh wow, that's really cool. That that was very fleeting because then after that, like I just snapped back to this doesn't make sense. You're getting your ass kicked, and yeah. you brought another fleshy thing that can ultimately like die. Right. Uh, if it's, I'll, I'll go back to like I said for the Ghostbusters review I did. If it's done right, if it's nostalgia done right, I don't get tired of it. I didn't get tired in that movie because they were still advancing and there were still new things happening. And it made sense that they did these callbacks and whatnot. Mm -hmm. I I don't, it doesn't make sense that they went back to Tatooine, really. It doesn't make sense that uh, he rode the Rancor just because, what, because uh, the Mandalorian rode the Blurb? Yeah. Blurg, you know? Well, aren't Mandal- Mandalorians Sorry. are supposed to have a uh, Mandalorians are supposed to have like a uh, like an empathy with animals, aren't they? So I wasn't so I don't know some of the pet things I wasn't so like caught up on. Like I didn't think yeah. it was so bad. Well, but it was also it was I mean that was weird too because it was just like he's so you know like 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 Steve did in his video. He's like you know I want the I want this cat. Yeah, uh, teach <laughs> yeah. me to ride. Teach me to ride this. Danny Trejo, who shows up for five seconds in Star Wars, just because, yeah, uh, it like that stuff. Like, oh my God, it's a Rancor! I want to ride this. What? Like, if he would have never said, if he would have never said that, and then he comes over the yeah. fucking buildings on the Rancor, that would have been badass. Man, that would have been amazing because yeah, it would have been no. You don't have yeah. to allude to it. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly. the one you could skip. That's the thing. It, yeah, let it be a surprise. Uh, if it's. Uh, if uh, I just lost my train of thought, I'm sorry. If it's um, you guys go, I'll, I'll catch up. <laughs> <laughs> I'll I'll well, take some responsibility for that. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Yeah, but it, oh, it's no. true. if it's just like if it if it's if 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 they deliver the rancor and hit the look on his face is what in the fuck am I supposed to do with this thing? And that's the yeah. end of the episode, and they don't mention it again, and we're all like. Kind of like we're like in the episode in the season one of Mandalorian. Whose boots are those that walked up to her body? And we wonder for the or we wonder or you forget, and then mm-hmm. they come back and you're, mm-hmm. you're like, holy shit! Oh, okay, he's riding a raincore. Mm-hmm. But like I don't know, making him so like, you know, s- scratching it and like making it so much like a pet. I don't know. Yeah. Like I said, that scene in the end in the, this episode was cool, but like the other stuff. They're trying to soft. They're trying to. They're trying to Disney it up too much. They're trying to soften yeah. them up too much. Oh, this fearsome creature is really just misunderstood, and I give them scratches, and it's it's all good now. I I think a better a better way to handle that would have been the huts. The twins show up with the rancor, and he looks at this thing, and he's like, "What the fuck am I supposed to do with a rancor?" Mm-hmm. Right? Like whatever, I'll throw it in the cage like Jabba had it, and then like it hits him. Okay, I need to get all my resources together. Because I have to fight these pikes. Then he comes over the top of the building riding the Rancor. Yeah. So there's no foreshadowing to it. You don't need that. And it. so I was listening to, um, I listened to a couple people afterwards. I, I broke my rule of not watching reviews or reactions before we do our review. But I was curious. I was like, because I know there's a couple people out there who are super fanboy like we are. But they tow a line. Like, there are episodes that they liked that we didn't, vice versa. There's some that we thought were awesome, and they were just like, those parts are cool. But you know, There's a mixed opinion there. But they still lean really hard. Like, they lean towards the Star Wars bag because maybe down the road there's a Star Wars bag. And one of the things that was called out that I was like, that's a really good point, is Boba Fett, for somebody who's going to be the leader and the boss – especially in this episode, like nobody listened to him. He was like, Oh, let's do this. And they're like, no, dude, let's do that. Or, or he, he, he still couldn't get his hands dirty to a certain extent and do the deed himself. So even with the rank, the rancor part, I was like, all right, that's so cool that he's you know riding it, whatever. Yeah. It was cheesy. Like you should have, I agree with you. It should have been some sort of out of nowhere. You don't expect it. But if they had just gone back to the palace, like, the Rancor would have been there anyway. That would have been a cool, like, out of the ground, rah, like, reveal all that. Like, so much. I still don't know why they let him be in charge. I thought maybe what's her name at a certain point would be like, you know what? I'm Dymo. And, you know, 
because she she off the guys anyway at the end. I would have preferred it ending. That that. I would have preferred scene. it ending that way. Yeah, I would have preferred it ending with she takes out. She, first off, for for Disney to not show like to show like minimal violence, right? And you, you just hung a guy on camera. Yeah, it's like where's yeah. your line? Yeah, <laughs> where, where do you where do yeah. you, where do you draw that line in the sand? Because I am yeah. not sure. Um, the other thing is, so she wipes out the mayor and the pikes, yeah. and the next thing she should have done. If that was where I wanted to snap it, and yeah. it's not, um, if she should have came out and popped Boba in the head. Yeah. As soon as she showed up behind him, bang, boss yeah. time, because you're inept. Yeah. Which she kind of points out when they're in the palace, and she's like, all right, we have these people over here, these people over there. And he's just like, mm. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. she's like, she's giving us the di- not the dialogue, she's giving us the, um, the, the plot threads. Oh, what was it? Sorry. The rundown. Yeah, she's giving you the rundown because they can't... It doesn't make sense, so they have to explain it, and they have to keep explaining it. Cad Bane has to explain it. Like, keep yeah. asking... Cad Bane is us in the show. He's like, he's like, you, you, did you forget you're this? Oh, you're getting soft. Like, he's... They have to keep explaining things, and I'm like, to your point, she should have... That would have been amazing if she's just like, you know what, dude? I keep saving your tail. I keep doing all these things. You work for me now. Yeah. But I would have liked what I would have liked some some version where she ends up in charge. Like I hate yeah. that they kill people off and I don't for a minute believe this is the last we've seen of Cad Bane, by the way. Uh I, I don't care that he got stabbed. Yeah. <laughs> but uh yeah. I I wouldn't have wanted them to kill off Boba and I wouldn't have wanted her to really do a coup because then that just traps us on Tatooine for him with another for another season or something yeah but yeah i i, I agree I, I was annoyed that that she's not now in charge and he's not like all right this you're better at this than me or something bye and just there's a off. better there's a better way to do it but i have to jump around a little bit if that's okay go for it did you guys catch the end credit scene <laughs> unfortunately okay so you got Cobb in the bath in the bath of tank right it was very obvious he didn't die. Well, to me, it was yeah. very obvious he didn't die in the desert. He was right. sitting I didn't up. think he died at all. So but why they, would but you But they even... said it like he did. They were like, sorry yeah, about your marshal. Yeah, why would they even do that if he clearly, if it's filmed or edited so poorly that he clearly looks like he didn't die? Right. Right? So you got him in the tank, right? Um, if he didn't die and you weren't going to have him in the entire fight, the best way to do it is you pass it you pass it over to him. You make him the hero. So now while they're shooting it out and they're having a hard time, which is another point I want to make because they're tactical idiots for some of the best assassins and bounty hunters in the galaxy. Um, yeah. What they should have done is they should have been like on the ropes, mm-hmm. and out comes Cobb. Yeah. And Cobb starts blowing people away from behind. Yeah. And then you end the whole thing with, you know what? Uh, as Boba Fett, maybe this isn't for me. Okay, so why don't you run this, and will be your muscle? You, you're you are the good guy. You're the marshal. You're more suited, more well suited to do this than I am. Yeah, you were running a city. I couldn't run a building. Yeah, you know. So <laughs> now you can you can be Cobb's muscle. You can be Cobb's cops, Cobb's marshals. Yeah, or his deputies for that matter. And I mean. Th- they it they would have mapped, ended better that way. But they even here's the thing they kept oh, they kept hinting because they they did this throughout right they they there's these hints right teach me how to ride this rancor you knew that that Grogu was coming back like there there was no oh which is yeah. he's gonna choose oh, I know? hated that so there's so many things that they hint to but I I was thinking back to Black Panther right Black Panther when there's the scene where he has the first battle to see if he can actually be king of Wakanda. And it's like, you know, he fights a dude on a thing. You know that this isn't the last time he's going to fight on that, in that area. When we bring in Cobb Vistula for the first time, you know it's not the last time he's going to do a showdown with somebody. In that case, he had the pikes there. But, I mean Cobb Vanth. You said Cobb Vanth, sorry. You know it's not the last time he's going to do that. So the, and then Cap, um, Cad Bane shows up, and these, all these names are so similar. Yeah. Cad, Cad Bane shows up and they do their standoff and he loses. 
right? And Cad Bane, two different times, says, if only he had his armor. Should have never lost the armor. To your point, why not have him show up? He is modified at this point. Like, why not? But third time standoff. Now him and Cad Bane. You set that up. You set it up the whole time that he that who's yeah. the fastest lawman, who's the fastest draw. And at the very end, when Boba's on the ground, I'm like, all right, show up. This is this is his chance. And he doesn't show up. And I'm like, why did you allude to any of this all all yeah. this time? What was the point? Or what about um how about even like keeping on that like one section of the episode? Yeah. What about that uh that magnificent seven uh, Zulu type scene, right? Mm. Where they're all barricaded back. Right. And you have the ED 209s and they're coming up yeah. and down the block. Yeah. And you're just pumping, like, you're trying to hold this one little fortification. And there's like seven of you. Right. Right. I didn't like, I didn't like that. The Godzilla thing coming over the hill, I was okay with. The King Kong thing coming over the buildings, I was okay with. The Magnificent Seven one was like, man, like, yeah. It makes you guys look tactically inept. Yeah. You're shooting the shit out of this thing and it has shields. You're not doing anything. So why keep shooting at it? Yeah. Like yeah, it's got to said to in the script. Yeah, right? <laughs> you you're some again, you're some of the most trained bounty hunters and assassins and your only answer is to keep shooting the wall. Yeah. Like at one point are you like, "Okay, cover fire. You guys are going to be cover fire." And this is definitely not working. And you pull the fire spray gunship, you pull the slave one over the hill or, or something, but it took, they eventually did it with the rancor, but it took way too long. Yeah. Well, you figure and, they're, they're better assassins than that. They should have been, they should have been sooner. They wasted like 20 minutes shooting at this thing through the shields. Yeah. Well, Anthony, do well, you, do you think that, did you, what did you think of that whole Cad Bane even angle? Like he shows up first and then leaves and then comes back, and then you have like that big shootout scene. Like, what did you think about his usage among all of that? I didn't like it. I thought I was sorry. I guess we're just gonna go straight into shitting on the rest of this episode. Yeah, uh, I can't there, unless it, you want to point out something yeah. you liked. If there's something else, by all right. means. <laughs> um, let me think about that. But I, I didn't. I didn't care for it. Like it. Like he was used so well. Showing up in and at the end of the of the other episode, mm-hmm. and then even him going to deliver the ultimatum and like there being some sort of, I guess, bounty hunter code or something to where mm-hmm. when Boba takes his hand off the weapon, he doesn't just gun him down. I'm like, right, all right, I can, okay, but then when he just shows up randomly in the middle of the gunfight, at and like and they do again. They did. They did the standoff again, and Boba gets his ass kicked again, and yeah. he's about to die again. And did you? Oh, the other callback you guys didn't mention: uh, how a stick accidentally takes him out in Return of the Jedi. A stick saved his life in this episode. Mm, good one. So nice. Yeah, I didn't catch that. It. It's like uh, he's getting by by the skin of his teeth, and I'm tired of it. Yeah. I, he didn't do that again. In that season two episode, he just owned everybody. Like that, I'm that I'm going off track. Uh, yeah, I didn't care for didn't care for the Cad Bane thing. I don't think he's dead at all. To see to to see him getting like to see Bulba killing him makes no sense because it's not like he had any relationship with Cobb Van. It's not yeah. like Cad Bane said, oh, I'm the one who killed the Tuscans, which would have been, I think Sal had mentioned that, and that would have made Amazing. more sense. Yeah. Your whole rule with respect thing, and I don't want to do this, I don't want... And you kill the guy who's a hired gun, whereas the Wookiee who ripped you out of your back to tank and tried to rip your arms off, you hired. Instead of, like, you know, I thought it would have been, I thought I was, I mean, I'm not happy with what we got. I'm not happy with this where I, I thought he was going to like, you know, whack him on the head with a stick and then he would pass out. Mm-hmm. But now you're just, now, now them doing that just pisses me off because I'm like, again, like I said, I don't believe for a minute he's dead. That thing beeping on his chest. I'm, I'm like, I'm going to guess that that is either one of two things. It's either something in his clothing that's going to 
activate some sort of a medical system or it's a beacon to his droid to come and put him, put his ass in a in a medical tube and because there's no way he's dead so I, I didn't like him showing up like that i didn't like the after the first standoff where they walk away i didn't think we needed another showdown unless it was Cobb Vanth showing right. up again yeah and going back to what you guys said why and why is he going to be modified if he's in a back to tank that means he's alive yeah right like if they yeah. could have gotten fennec to a back to tank she wouldn't have needed to be modified i don't think so right did he ask yeah, her I think this, that was... or are you just modifying him now i think that was the point that she was out in the desert for so long before he found her. Yeah, and like they didn't have the resources. Like, you know, it's they make this thing seem like that fluid seem like it's a it's a it's it like some sort of super healing thing. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know. I mean, it keeps Vader it, it helps Vader when he's out of the suit. So yeah, it's amazing. But yeah. I don't like that. Can we can we jump into uh when we're ready, I really have I'm really not happy with Grogu showing up, but <laughs> can, can, can I touch on Spoilers. one more thing about? Can I touch on one more thing about Cad Bane before yeah. we segue? Yeah, um, touch whatever so, you want. Yeah. So two <laughs> yeah. things, two things that I think fix both of those scenes. Right. One is it should have been a shootout to a draw. It should have been, if it's the Boba Fett that we thought we knew, uh, once Cad kind of like pushes him, it should have been a shootout to a draw. And then they both kind of like back away, like, okay, this is, this is not good for either of us. We're going to get way too hurt before the actual battle starts. Let's, you know, step back. Um, um, you're talking about the initial beginning yes. of the episode standoff? That's what you well, mean? What, once, he, once Cad Bane tells Boba Fett, you know, uh, he told him about the Tuscans. Mm. And you see he's like seething under the helmet. That should have been, he should have took a shot at him. They should have took shots at each other. They both got rocket packs or like rocket boots. They're zipping around a little bit. Maybe they both end up like a little hurt, but they graze each other. But then like Fennec pulls him out, Cad Bane retreats. And that would have been a better setup for the next fight where you could have had, uh, you could have had them go at it again and had a decisive winner or you have Cobb show up and Cobb does it. The other thing was we've seen it in, uh, we've seen it in the Clone Wars episodes. You could have had Cad Bane, instead of just having him show up, you can cut to behind a building. And there he is, scaling the building. Or sneaking around the back. While all the fighting's going on over here, Cad is sneaking behind the buildings over here in an alley or something, watching the fighting go on. Because he was doing that in, in Clone Wars. That was always his angle, you know, yeah. Scaling buildings, yeah. coming in through vents, coming in through back windows, walking yeah. around the back, not going in head first unless there was like a duel or something. Yeah. The whole point but with some of these bounty hunters and, and these assassins, you see them, the whole point is not to fight. Yeah. The whole point is to, to get the mark and get out. Right. Yeah. Which they did really well in the Clone Wars show, but they're not doing it here. They make they made all the assassins like dumb, like they forgot what they're doing. They forgot what they're trained for. I mean, I can't, I, I cannot help but somehow, the, the fact, it's not, you know, to quote Training Day, it's not what you know, it's what you can prove. And it's hard, it's really hard for, for me to not just be that angry, this is Disney's fault person. But I, I feel like at a certain point, I, I have to, because again, to your, exactly to what you said, Cad Bane in the Clone Wars it's, you know, he's, he's in the fight, but he's in the fight when he has to be, you guys all do this. And then, but I'm still working the way that they yeah. convey him. Here, you guys are, you guys are soldiers. You can fodder. go die like, you yeah. can go die like soldiers. I have a job to do. Yeah. yeah. Like he, he, that's a, like, that would have been him. Like for him to come out at the end to be like, Oh, I guess I'll do it myself. Don't get me wrong. It was cool that he he got rid of the Rancor so fast. I, I actually like that. But at the same time, he would have been working. He should have been working. He should have been doing something to somehow get an advantage the entire time. Unless unless their angle is because he's so old, now he's more like, ah, I'm just going to wait it out and play it smart. That's the only angle I could see. Only one I could see. Yeah, no, I don't, I don't agree I don't with that know. at all. 
I, I would have even that. enjoyed if if uh, after that initial thing with him and Bulba, the next time you see him is him going with going after Fennec because he realized, like you know, like Sal said, maybe we see him hanging off in the background and right. he re- he sees he maybe he's about to take a shot at one of them and then he sees her speed off and he's like, ah oh, shit. And he goes to protect, uh, yeah, to try to protect uh, the Pikes because that's the money that would make, that would be in line with him. While I'm not going to get paid, or I'm not going right. to keep getting paid, if she whacks these guys and she's master assassin Fennec Shand, I'm not getting my money. So I, I gotta go. Yeah, and then I feel like a showdown between the two. Going back to what we've said, because she's portrayed as more com- competent, that would have been a better showdown than what we got between the two of them. Yeah. So. You did know. you like the? Did you like that they took her out of the gunfight to make her do the black op stuff, even but, though the black op stuff no. only paid off at the end? But it did. But what? But again, proving that he's inept. What did that solve? It 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 literally solved no part of the the conflict. It creates a power vacuum. It makes things. It makes things worse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At you, the you end could of the solve. Episode, you could solve this whole thing. All dory magically. You could solve this whole thing if he came in and he made some posters, handed out pins and pens, and he ran from there. Because that's what he wants. Yeah. The, the, but does he? But that's it. And again, I don't know. that's why I don't. I, don't, I know. don't know what the plot of the show is. I it, and and that's why I liked Cad Bane said it. He's like, "What's your end goal here? Like, why are you even do? Why are we having this conversation?" And Boba doesn't even answer it. Like they 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 gave us the question that we've all been asking for seven weeks and didn't even bother answer the question. Even though they asked it. Because they don't have an answer. They don't have an it, answer. Their answer is, got, well, we wanted to, we want to print more money off of the Star Wars tit. Which isn't how it's gotta be a power struggle with tits are for, I know. <laughs> uh, it's gotta be the power struggle inside inside Disney. You know, it, it's I, it, I don't I don't know. I, I really I'm not Disney, I'm sorry, in, in Star Wars. Because you it's have Disney. the power struggle. Yeah, it's Disney. Well, you have the power. There's two different ones. Because you have the power struggle internally with right. Kennedy and Favreau. And then you have the overarching mouse. So whatever fight you're having here, then you got to fight the boss. It's like a, like a video game. You, know, you fight the little guys first, and then you got to take <laughs> on the boss when you're done. So <laughs> you could fight it out amongst yourselves. But House of Mouse always wins. They always win. Or at least that's, a, at least that's another fight you got to have. Yeah. So we'll, we'll, we'll jump to it. So Grogu comes in, Grogu has entered the arena and I thought he was going to pull out a lightsaber. I thought they were going to show that, that he actually gets both out of the equation, but they didn't, whatever. Anthony, you seem to have a real big issue with the fact that he was even there. Yeah. Uh, You are now Django unleashed or unchained. (laughs) (laughs) Go for it. Uh, why are they why you're wasting season three of Mandalorian plot points and reveals and surprises? Why, why we said this. I don't want to see Luke and Grogu again for a while. I don't want right. to see the I don't want to see Grogu in back in with the Mandalorian for a, little, a while. The Mandalorian has a new quest and it makes sense why they're on separate paths. Show Grogu later on in the season, training with Luke again, something. It pisses first of all. All of a sudden, you're shy, or Mark Hamill wasn't available. You're gonna you're gonna throw him in the front seat when he has. I mean, maybe he knows, maybe he doesn't. The kid has a, ha- a habit of pulling on levers and shit. So well, you, you got throw R- him in the cockpit. You got R two driving, right? Wasn't R two in the back? Yeah, he drove it. R two was driving, but who's to say? But I'm just I'm just all right. Listen, don't don't derail me with logic. Okay? <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, okay. Huh. They deactivated okay. all the flight controls in the cockpit. I get it. I'm just saying the kid likes to hit buttons. You mean to tell me that R2 is not like, really, Luke? Really? You can't hold him in your lap and I'll fly See, the your, both of you? We can't to your knock point, him he out. Still has Give the him ball. some dime attack. <laughs> he gave him the ball. He gave him the ball. That's what I'm he didn't have to the your ball. point, he still, has, he still had the ball with him, right? No. Or he held on to it. Mando gave him the ball. Yes. Mando gave him back the ball. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, him showing up, it just pissed me off because, like I said, I mean, that was the main thing. I was like, come on. Could, for for what I all just said, I didn't want to see him so soon. That that's a season three reveal. What what Grogu chose, uh, as Sal had mentioned, or one of you mentioned, I, I forgive me. He's a child. 
literally, no pun intended, because that's what we all call them. Right. He, he's a baby. He's 50 years old, but he can't even talk. He coos at everything, and he's amazed by shit. He's a baby, and Luke goes, A or B, choose right now. Yeah. It, it, that pissed me off further, because like I said, we're, we're solidifying the sequel trilogy's timeline where Luke is a failure and a hypocrite, because like we've said, you must forgo attachments, Grogu. You must do this. You must do that. Dude, you wanted your father back. You fought like hell to get your buddy Han back. Uh, you take your ne- your sister's son. It, it's nepotent. Is the cat in the room? Yeah. Hang on. <laughs> let me uh... <laughs> uh, I saw kidding. like a shadow move over there. You're like, oh, no, the mouse is coming to get to get me. Exactly. Uh, yeah. You're, you're solidifying that Luke that we see because it makes no sense that he's going to be so rigid when he hadn't been that rigid. And why is he suddenly going down that path? He's still talking to force ghosts at that point, I would imagine. Wouldn't Ben or Anakin or Yoda have said, hey, man, listen, you know, this didn't really work out so well when we were super strict like that. So, you know, unless it's a, up a the, little bit. I'm kind of okay with that because unless it's Ahsoka telling him about Anakin and it's like, oh, wait, they took Anakin when he was eight and then he fell in love with my mom and that was a problem. And so, okay, so emotions are the issue. Like uh, that I can kind of justify. Well, no, emotions aren't the issue. The fact that they're like, no, you're supposed no, no, to I'm, be. I, I'm not saying that. I'm, I know I know it's not the issue. But if that's what Ahsoka's oh. telling him and he's going by the old order Oh wait a second! That was a problem. They took my dad when he was too old, because he doesn't know. You remember? All well, he has is a bunch of books. Well, that's the thing, though. He should a, know because and a dead why Ben Kenobi. Why would have talked to him? Sorry. No, no, no you're it's, right. It's true. I'm, I'm saying, like, you you went through the trouble of showing us the two of them together. Why wouldn't? Why? Okay, I, I mean, I just for the hell of it at this point, because it. I, I want to see that. I mean, I don't need to see that in Book of Boba Fett, but make it eight episodes and make episode seven Ahsoka and Luke having a conversation, sipping something. I don't know what they drink in for that's not alcohol, but you know, blue milk. T- t- you know, lay the it nipples out. of a uh, whatever. Milk. Yeah, God, the blue milk. Uh, do something like it just pissed me off because I guess I mean it was a waste. And then, like I said, I did almost expect it. Like I was kind, I would have rolled my eyes so fucking hard. If he whipped out a lightsaber and he had the chainmail on, but I'm glad they didn't do that. But it also, I'm like, oh crap! So he's out of the school. You're not going to see Luke again anymore in the in the friggin' in the show, which is fine because it's not his show. But you know, unless they're going to actually do a Luke Skywalker TV show, that's it for Luke. And now again, they've left this off with him on a downer ending, where, like I said, to me, I mean, tell me if you guys think otherwise. They're leading right into Last Jedi Luke. Yeah. Yeah. Right? So. I, sending Grogu and, back know, is the. Him doing, him doing the, the trick to it. I'm sorry? Sending Grogu back is, is the death stroke. Because in oh. the books, it, Ben is the first student. So sending Grogu back yeah. is like, oh, okay, you're, you're committing to the sequel trilogy. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. But they and, like the sequel trilogy. Like, they, yeah. yeah, they do. And I mean, it was like, at least you see Grogu got some progression. He doesn't, he doesn't pass out after the, uh, after doing anything with the force. So that's cool. Like, okay. Yeah. He passed out with the Rancor, but by that point he'd already taken out the droid and had to deal with the Rancor back to back. So it makes sense. You know, it shows that he is getting more powerful and he did learn some things with Luke, but Still, like, it just didn't. It didn't need to happen. There was so much that had to happen in Episode Seven. That X-wing showing up was not one of them. And I did. Yeah, I was right. just like, I was about to text you guys and be like, "No, they're bringing in Luke. We talked about this. They didn't listen to the episodes." <laughs> uh, yeah, it so disappointing. Well, that I, was I'm disappointing, and then like, yeah. No, but I'm happy that they 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 listened to an extent where they didn't bring in Luke because it would have made no sense. As we've mentioned though, the show makes no sense. Like, you know, bringing him, bringing in Luke would have been like, all right, who is he helping the bad guys now? Does he know? Does he know, you know, the, the, the townspeople or the the other gangs turning on them 
I was like, but they said it. They didn't even say the gangs. Like, I feel like they said like it was the townspeople. Like, oh, they, like, they turn. I'm like, well, uh, sure. Why not? Like, but even if they're turning on you, that's your sign that they don't even want you there anyway. Nobody wants you here. So I was, that led to more confusion because I was like, yeah. who is he fighting for here? To touch on that, the like, the like most hat biting, just get, mm. like hat biting scene of the entire episode was when I believe he's talking to Fennec, where he's saying, these are my people. I can't have this happen. I'm like, they're fucking not your people. Yeah. You were born Thank a you. tube in, I, I was in Genosha. Yeah. You know, like you're, you're a fucking clone. Your only people are the 501 and anybody else who's still around floating around with the clone troopers mm -hmm. that are, might be out there in the galaxy having babies and your dad. These are not your people. You came yeah. here strictly for work. Yeah. You know who's your yeah. people? You know who's your people? Then that's your people. You know, Paz Vizsla, that's your people. If you want to go back and, and commit to being Mandalorian, which I don't think that's his angle, but no. um, those are your people. Other clones out in the galaxy, those are your people. These are not your people. You've only ever been here for work. Once. Once. Yeah, <laughs> yeah your one job, your the last job. were his people. Yeah. Your last job was to go to Tatooine. Yeah. Yeah. So, oh, man. And here's like the that, thing. That was... It, I here, to, like, here's throw stuff at my television, and and to I don't know if this is part of the snap segment or whatever, but like, even if there was a scene where he's in the town, right? He's like, I'm taking over this place. Like, I'm gonna be the new crime boss here. I know how important tattooing is to the overall crime story of the galaxy, and maybe he's walking around and he's like, oh, like there's people, or like some kid gives him something, and he's like, yeah. he's like, you know what? Maybe these. Maybe it's time, you know, maybe this, my angle's wrong. These people are actually, something needs to happen. And again, that's where the Tuscans, they, they, you know, they're the ones that could have had that play. The Tuscans show you that, oh, there's a human side to everything here. Maybe, maybe I'm going about this the wrong way. And then the Pikes show up and you're like, okay, he's going to, but although aside from that, what, why is there a tie to all of this? It, it, it's out of nowhere. It doesn't. It's irrelevant. Yeah. It's manufactured yeah. because they wanted to show Tatooine over and over again for no reason. Yeah. It's Stockholm syndrome to the Sarlacc. <laughs> He's been in that Sarlacc for way too long. Yeah. I, at first I'm, I'm dying and I got these acid burns and now it's, you know what? I love it, it here me. and it's kind of, it's yeah. comfortable. Yeah. It's moist in here. It's dry yeah. outside. It's arid. Yeah. You know? Yeah. We're friends. I love him. So Star yeah. Wars theory uh, I was watching his reaction. Uh, I was shocked that he actually hated the last episode. I was, I was wow. thoroughly shocked. Um, yeah, he fanboys a lot. Uh, he, I don't... Yeah, he does. But on this one, he was like, nah. He's like, he, I, I loved it. He was like, if the final, and you kind of called this out earlier, he's like, if the final resolution is a shootout versus these people, why not just get in your ship and mow them down? Right? Right across. Yeah. Yep. Problem solved. Problem solved. The the whole stand stand the <sighs> it just I I, I again to to I, I say this a lot to an earlier point. Who's the blame on this one? Is it is it Dave? Is it Rodriguez because he's tied to all the shitty episodes? Is it John? Like who is it that's just letting this develop and you're like because it wasn't this bad in the Clone Wars. I'm going to always go back to that because that's pre-Disney. Clone Wars didn't have these kind of plot angles. If anything, they flushed things out. They made storylines yeah. make sense. And in this one, I'm like, Bad Batch, the middle part of Clone Wars, uh, the final season, and then this. Mandalorian's great. Mandalorian, you know, aside from Beskar being... Uh, that I forgot to touch on that. Too with powerful. The, yeah, with the rancor not uh, being able to break through it, I was just like, "What is happening?" Like, but um, I I I well, don't know who's I, at this point. Rancor, I'm just the, like the droid too. Yeah, which one? 
the droid like the it gets pow- it gets more powerful because in in season 1 the uh, the beast dis- like really wrecks Din Djarin. Yeah. And in this one the be- maybe because it's supposed to be pure purer Beskar but yeah. it deflects the uh, the spike from the droid too. Yeah. Yeah. So but Beskar's supposed to be able to it's not that it's invincible correct or invulnerable correct. it's supposed to that it could take more hits before it heats up. Yeah. So that's why it could take a lightsaber shot. I mean, it can't take if, if you're, you're trying to pin the guy down. Right. It's gonna break. Yeah. But he could, you know, pop, pop, pop. Yeah. And it could hold up. Um. But yeah, no, he's he's a he's a tank man. And it's, you know how? Oh, sorry. No, 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 go for it. Go for it. Speaking of, of Din Djarin at the at the shootout, right? Did Did anybody that directed or wrote this watch the first episode of Mandalorian? Where he wipes out an entire town by himself with an IG droid. Yeah, and he struggled with these guys. Well, these guys are technically assassin, you know, killers and whatnot. Although the last they're ones, drug, they're drug dealers. Like you know, the the other guys True. were were a hired hit, like hired hitmen going for Grogu. Oh, that's right. Yeah, those are actually tougher. They were tougher. Those guys that. are more trained and better equipped. Yeah, yeah. These guys are just bodyguards. Yeah, yeah. What about um? The so he sends off Fennec. He's like, "Oh, I I know the resolution. Go kill this guy." She makes a pit stop to save the uh, Power Rangers. There, mm-hmm. I got I I at that point I was checked out because she saves them. I'm like, whatever, fine. And then she jumps down off the building, and her her motorcycle thing, her speeder bike, was right next to them. And I was like, well, I, was like <laughs> I was like, come on, Robert, like, g- give me, give me yeah. something. You get paid to do this. Like you're telling me that she pulled up next to them. And they didn't even, they didn't know. Nobody was like, Hey, what, Hey, where are you going? Yeah, oh little, yeah. 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 What? There's these I, little I didn't, fixes. I thought her do unnecessary editing. parkour was, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but there's little things you can do to fix it. Right. Yeah. Like, all that takes is a one second scene of pop, 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 pop. She takes all these shots. They look up. She's on the balcony. She takes one tap of her wrist. Bike shows up. Jumps down. The bike shows up. Yeah. Problem solved. Or just don't even the, show it. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, the issue that I believe it was Anthony, the issue that Anthony had with Luke about uh, the emotional attachment with Grogu, you can fix that in a two minute scene of him and Ahsoka doing kata or they're like sparring, like very light sparring where they're mm-hmm. talking to each other as they're going through the moves. You could explain it in like a, a minute to like two and a half minutes. Yeah. Yeah. And that explains to him having the issue with the emotional attachment. Is the old order the right way? Should we be going in a new direction? Yeah. What really happened to my father? Yeah. Two minutes. She, he two has, minutes, and the other one is fixed in two seconds. He has access to the greatest resource to fixing the Jedi order. And a hero in the yeah. Clone War. Yeah. A, a general. I mean, she, she, they, I don't think they gave her the title, but she's tech. She was a general it, to me. She did everything everybody else did. She saved Anakin time after time. She saved Obi-Wan time after time. And yet, all right, will I ever see you again? Hmm, we'll see. The fuck? Yeah, <laughs> I, I'm, only, I'm only the yeah. other, I'm only the second Jet. Well, not even the second. I'm only the first Jedi to survive being attacked by Darth Vader. Yeah. You being, you being the second Luke. Yeah. Don't, I don't, I'm not credible. Yeah. I see a lot of your father in you. I should probably, I should probably work with you so you don't follow in his footsteps. (laughs) I see a lot of your father, I see a lot of your father in you. Yeah. 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 You know, like, come on. Yeah. So frustrating. They had had so much going for them. Yeah. And I understand it's like, you don't want to, it, it seems like they don't want to write themselves into certain corners, but they keep doing it anyway. And it's I'm like, say, wait a minute, what show have you watched? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, just, Dude. you know, just. <sighs> you don't like, like, like if, if you're at, you know, you're at your job or you're, you're trying to navigate some kind of like social situation, you know, yeah. and you catch yourself digging, you catch that like you're digging yourself into a hole. Yeah. And you're trying to get yourself out of trouble and the harder you try to get yourself out of it, the digger you deep, the deeper you dig yourself further in. 
Yeah, they're trying to not back themselves into corners. And while actively trying not to back into a corner to leave everything wide open, they're backing themselves into a corner. Yeah. Yeah. You need um, to make some decisions. Like, yeah, they need to. The hard ones. They And yeah. frankly, yeah. thank you. I was going to say they need to make some hard decisions and they need to say the guy who we say is a ruthless bounty hunter is a ruthless bounty hunter. Enough of this. I'm going to rule with respect shit. Like, I mean, this is this is the snap. He should have gone into Tatooine if they really needed him to go there. Some reason he should have gone in gun guns blazing and saying, you know what, this is this is a bounty hunter plan. Welcome this to the Boba Fett base. show. Yeah, it yeah. should have been show, showed up blowing some stuff up. Welcome to the Boba Fett show. Who wants? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, man, even that, even the just, standoff. Yeah. The Pikes have like. Don't the Pikes have like frigates and gunships? If they really wanted to, they could send a well, missile from like low orbit. Boom. Okay. Most Espus is a shithole. Yeah. All right. We'll send the spice train somewhere else. You know? Yeah. yeah. Oh, there's so many plot holes. But, but that goes back to like. <laughs> that goes back to what they did with uh, Daredevil season two. Oh, man. Electra, there's like hundreds and hundreds of hand ninjas out there. We're not going to make it. 20 guys on a roof. Mm hmm. Yeah. yeah. The Pikes have so many soldiers. There's like 30 guys. Yeah. That's a lot. 30 yeah. guys and two huge droids. That's a lot. I also, but... to, <laughs> you, you, sorry, you, you saying that like there, there's, there's like 30 of those dudes and they're all blasting damn. So, uh, what do you call them? Santo uh, Santos. Um, they're all blasting this dude as he's running. And my man's bulletproof just on his own. <laughs> like, I mean, <laughs> I know, like I know, Wookies are I know Wookies are tough, right? Blasters, but, but they're hitting him like yeah. th they're hitting him in the bandolier. If, yeah. if you watch it, like look, watch it slow, and you see it actually it hits the bandolier every time and comes off his shoulder. <laughs> like, yeah. hey, you, man, you guys are great shots. If you guys can yeah. hit a pouch on his shoulder every yeah. time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, can we? One second, can we have a moment for the uh, the guards who got pushed over the yeah. Cliff? Yeah, RIP. That was unnecessary. Like, that that was sad. Well, I was like, "Come on!" That was they unnecessary. Just, they, they were they were probably like, I, I, they were growing on me a lot. Yes, I won't even lie. I was, yeah, for some they're reason, probably, I, was just, I was getting a, I was getting more attached to them than Boba. They're probably the least tactically sound individuals in the entire episode because how the fuck do you not know there's a cliff behind you? <laughs> where did this? Go? Yeah. Oh my where did this god! Cliff where did this from? cliff come from? Did you put it here? I didn't put the cliff here. Did hey, you put this cliff here? Yeah. We're gonna stand this? guard. We're gonna stand guard on all these ships here where's a good spot to stand i, I need you i need you to watch this ledge <laughs> yeah what but sh should we face uh, into the city so that we have where your eyes in the sky no the ledge no, no, no. i said the ledge yeah and i want you to watch the ships from the ledge and the train like there's a train along the edge and they decide that they're going to stand outboard of the train Next to the cliff, like the you couldn't. Worst you, train, the what? worst train station ever. One star. I, I, I do not approve of this train station. <laughs> you yeah. couldn't. You couldn't write a better way for them to die. <laughs> yeah. Give me no like, respect. Give no me respect like two for minutes. The green you guys can ramble a little bit. I'll figure out a better way for them to die. <laughs> and then, yeah, just, you just, can give, legit give like, ask that pad of paper two. out. You can yeah. ask your daughter. Hey, I need you to find a way to kill these two Gamorrean guards. Based off your knowledge of kids shows, what's a good way for them to die? Well, yeah. <laughs> she'll come up. She'll just say, like, throw them on the train okay. at that point. Like, <laughs> yeah. That could have been it. They could have hit them with a net, threw them in the train, and just kidnapped them. Yeah. Then you beat the shit out of them for a few days, and you send their heads back to Boba. Like, uh, <laughs> who do they guard know, against anyway? No, no, you don't send their heads back to Boba. You send Boba bacon and eggs. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Breakfast. Yeah. Oh God! My um, wife is delicious. My, so my wife is not into Star Wars or or any of this sci-fi stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. She's got two brothers who are a little bit older than me. Yeah, and they kind of like beat this stuff into her head as a kid, so she hates it. Oh. And I'm watching it over breakfast. I told her I'm doing work. I got to watch it over breakfast, yeah. right? And uh, I'm doing homework. And she sees the scene where it's after Boba gets hit and the helmet comes off. Yeah. And she's walking past to the stove and she goes, 
oh, it looks like Joe Rogan. <laughs> God, I like, thank you. I thank you. The, the the two seconds that you added to this show is more entertaining than what I've just watched for the last yeah, hour. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Yeah. Thanks, babe. Uh, well, so I, like I said, though, I wanted the all out war, but I'm yeah. not happy with how we got there. It was. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if you'd agree. It's like I said, they're going to give us an action packed episode and it's going to be like, why? You're doing, yeah. and it's not even that great of an action. It's not even that great of action to really cover up the fact that the rest of the show has been shit. Yeah. Yeah. Or you know, it, or it makes sense. Let's let's go to Freetown. You know, you're gonna, yeah. you're you're we're gonna have a one last standoff. Where should we do this? You know, Freetown. I can Cobb's see all around home. me. Cobb's there. He'll help yeah. us. Um. You get a 360 view. You can't sneak up on anybody. We're just going to free, we're going to Freetown. You know, if you keep you keep with the Wild West yeah. trope, right? Yeah. And uh, so back in the Wild West, your your surgeon was your dentist, and you know everybody. You know, if you had more than one skill, if you can sew, you can stitch. Right. Right. So now Freetown, you make it that like that Deadwood type town that they wanted to be, and what you do is you kind of you make it like that Deadwood type town and you have them like maybe you show up and someone's doing surgery on them like they're stitching them up yeah oh that one's so good so hey what that. what happened don't worry about it yeah. it won't happen again exactly. In, intro show <laughs> yeah um well all right we we attempted to to give our air our gripes, air our grievances. Um, I think we did it in an orderly fashion. It was hard. My brain totally was like, my, my brain was like, like, like it was like an ADD attack of some sort going on. Um, yeah. Any, I guess, final thoughts you guys have on this or is there a look forward that you want to just get off your chest? Uh, Sal, biz, I got a way to fix it. I'm going to try to put it out sometime this week or next week. Yeah. Um, I think there is some merit to the first season of Book of Boba Fett if it's not the first season. Yeah. Uh, that's kind of that's going to be my big angle going forward when they do snap video. When I do this snap video, um, Book of Boba Fett season one works better as season two. Mm. And then there's there's this there's, there's a gap that needs to be filled to get us there. Yeah. Anthony? Uh, I hope... Leave him on Tatooine. Just let's... Like we've said, all right, now we need space. We need space from Luke. We need space from Tatooine. The next shows coming out are Ahsoka and then Mandalorian, if I'm right. Actually, we have um, Obi-Wan. Oh, um Sorry, yeah. Wow, where's my head? Well, I'm I'm, think, I'm sorry. I mean, I knew about that. I'm thinking in this timeline because like oh, Obi Wan yeah. and uh, even Cassie and Endor. That's, that's before all in the past. Yeah. yeah. So I'm just saying, like in this timeline going forward. I mean, I would hope we're getting. Although actually, shit, you could see Boba Fett in those shows in a flashback. Well, they, the whole show is a flashback. But uh, all right, I'm yeah, I'm talking myself into a corner as usual. In in the current current time. We need space. We need no more Boba Fett for a while. No more uh no more Luke for a while. Let's do Ahsoka and like let's just do Ahsoka. Let's not try to branch her off into too much shit. Same thing with Mandalorian. Let's get him to Mandalore. I don't like that Grogu's gonna be with him on Mandalore, but it is what it is at this point. Stay the fuck off Tatooine. Stay off Tatooine, leave Boba and Fennec there. Come back in a couple of years, maybe, but just like, let's get back to hinting at the larger world of Star Wars because it doesn't always work when they ex show us or explain the larger world of Star Wars because, I mean, stop me if you think that's that's a wrong statement, but it, no, it's, it's hit like and miss. It. At best, it's hit and miss. So, yeah, yeah, leave it alone for a while. Let's go back to the new toys that you, well, in in Din Djarin. go back to the new toy you made, and because uh, that was working for two seasons, that was working. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
yeah, I'm um, I'm all set on the nostalgia stuff. I'm all set on the callbacks. I think to show us something new, allude to, you know, maybe Din Djarin stumbles on the um, new galactic, um, or the first order. first order. You know, maybe maybe he stumbles onto that. You know, go like go back to season one. Let's let's go into the galaxy and see what this what we assume is a post galactic empire universe. Even though we know they're still around, we know they still have strongholds in places. Let's just do that and just drop all this. You know, oh, I I know this person. Oh, I don't like done with it. Yeah. It, if. Something we can all agree on is if they stay out of Jakku, Navarro, Tatooine, stay out of the desert, please. You have three planets that we've been to in everything after Return of the Jedi, yeah. and they've all been deserts. Yeah. If, pick a, a whole galaxy. Yeah. And they're all dust yeah. bowls. Pick something yeah. decent, please. <laughs> let's yeah. let's get that like, Cor- Coruscant. You know, do Coruscant the can't, underworld. Coruscant yeah. Can't be, Coruscant. yeah, it can't be the only city planet. Yeah. Well, we have the Halo. Go to fucking Halo. Yeah, man. Yeah, go back. They have to be, and the Halo was, you know, man-made. There's got to be other ones. There's going to be other Halos out there. Go there. That was cool. Yeah. Like, yeah. And, sh- and shameless plug, watch my Halo reaction trailer. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, safe to say, you know what? Why don't, just, for this, just to put a bow on the entire season, what are we, we going to rate it out of... 10. Oof. Oof, man. Out of 10. I rate it as a seven hours I'm never going to get back in my life. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely, it's like, oh, it. man, like five maybe. Like, it's not, it's not bad on, as a standalone, it's not bad, but like in the greater world, the greater Star Wars universe, it's not, not good at all. I'm, I'm going to go with, if it's, if we're going to go out of 10 and we'll say that the Mandalorian like season two is like an eight, mm-hmm. you know, I'll give this one a good six, six, six point five. You know, the high points were high, mm-hmm. um, but the show doesn't stand on its own. It's it, it there, you know, there's watchable episodes, you know, it's not a, it's not a last Jedi where I can't watch it again, but there's watchable episodes mm-hmm. here. So 6.5 Star Wars fan should watch it when they have a chance. Uh, I was going to say, I'm going to say three, three and a half for the Out of three 10. for the three for the three watchable episodes, episode <laughs> two, the Mandalorian and from the desert, a stranger comes yeah. and the half for like, the other cool snippets like in there were cool things in all the episodes, but mm-hmm. not enough to save the episode type of thing. So for three solid episodes and all the snippets, I'd have to say three and a half. Like we're going to do this very soon. Look for the snap because Sal's where Sal starts it and where we take it from there is uh, they, they need to cut us a check because, yeah. you know, and uh, yeah. I wish they I want would. to get on a ramble here, so I'll just shut up. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, fellas, for jumping in. Uh, thank you, everybody, for listening. Thank you for watching. Hey, Archer Live, every Thursday, 8.15, here on Nerd Affiliated. we got Rambling with Anthony. we got The Snap with Sal. We have Sal over on Twitch. We have the Nerd Affiliated channel on Twitch starting soon, so... Lots of cool stuff happening from here at the Nerd Affiliated channel. So from uh, Sal, Anthony, and the cat taking a shit behind me, we'll talk to all you nerds in the next episode. Peace. Carpe noctem. See ya.